Casey. And I'm Courtney Casey. Shannon doesn't know who he is today. He's having a bad day. It's a little rough. He broke a bottle of wine. So, today we are trying a 2010 Cabernet Sauvignon from mm -hmm. Lynn Alexander Wines. Yep, and that is the ultra premium line from Cherry Creek Cellars. Cherry Creek is in Brooklyn, Michigan, Michigan not, not New York. York. Can you tell this is take two? <laughs> um, but they have, um, they're pretty well known for their red wines mm -hmm. at Cherry Creek Cellars, but this is their ultra premium line. Yep. Um, so I believe, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, so, I'm sure they will. Um, I remember talking to John Burka, the owner mm -hmm. of Cherry Creek Cellars, and Blake Konecki, the winemaker over there, at an event last year. And I want to say that John said the reason name behind the name of the wine was, I think they're both his kids' middle names. Perhaps. Or maybe I'm just pulling that out of thin air. That sounds about right. <laughs> or maybe I just gave it a totally different reason for the name. But um, they actually, if you're familiar with John Burka, He's kind of everywhere these days. Um, yep. He has Cherry Creek Cellars, he has Sleeping Bear Winery and Bad Bear Brewery, yep. which is um, kind of more of a, the Sleeping Bear is more of like a whimsical line yep. um, with like bear, cartoony bears on the front. And they also have a, a Michigan store inside that location right. Um, right off of the freeway. And then he's also trying to start Detroit City Cellars on Belle Isle right. with Blake Kaunacki, um, but um, as with most things that involve Detroit, that's a sticky, sticky situation. So also, there he's also starting Grand River Marketplace. We were just reading about this the other day in downtown Jackson, which they're going to have um, a brewery, a winery, sounds like a deli, restaurant, all kinds of stuff going on. So he's just oh. kind of like everywhere. So yeah, so anywhere you go around that area, you are bound to run into some kind of John Burka endeavor. Very cool. Yes. So Cabernet Sauvignon as a straight varietal in Michigan is is semi rare, I would say, don't you think? Yeah, not a ton of places doing it. They did down the the southwest part of the state. They do it a little bit, and these grapes looks like came from the Lake Michigan Shore yes. region. So the that's, Lake Michigan Shore. That's, so that's where the grapes came yeah. from there. So primarily, that's um, you're gonna find it in the southern region. I very very seldom have I don't think I've ever seen it up in the Traverse City area. Yeah, as, it might as a be in some variety. blends. Yeah. yeah, right, right. But typically, they they can't ripen it just just enough actually and the back label gives you a little more insight into a little more specifically where the grapes come from it says yep. a small parcel of gnarly 25 year old vines within the lake michigan shore eva got some old vines going on there very cool yeah so and only 52 cases of this were produced so we feel very fortunate to have gotten our hands on a bottle of this yeah absolutely take a look at the color it is like deep beautiful red yeah very ruby some purple, purple going on in there. Yeah. What do you get on the nose? Let me see. I've been so busy talking, I haven't been sniffing. When it was away from my nose, I almost got a whiff of licorice, but then when you get close, mm -hmm. you get more of the smoky, oaky smell. Yeah, it's very okay. smoky. A little black cherry. Campfire smoke, sort of. Mm -hmm. I love that smell. Yeah, I get some, some yeah. cherry going on yeah, there. Yeah, I, I get black licorice as well. Yeah, I was getting red licorice back here. That was more just like... So way red to licorice for like the... here, here. Black so it's licorice like if, there. So if you, it's like if you threw some licorice and some cherries into a fire. Right. <laughs> that doesn't sound appealing, but it's a really good note. Delicious. That has got a, a full body for sure. Very smooth. It's very smooth. It's a smooth operator. Hi. <laughs> Right? You like it? I do. do I, I get like black plums, blackberry, black cherry, black, a lot of black, black going black. on, right? A lot of black fruit. Um, definitely the the oakiness, the you know cigar box type. Uh, yeah. Aged in Great Lakes oak for 14 months. Oh, that's cool. Surly style. Ah. So they kept the, the yeast with it mm -hmm. while it aged. Un unfiltered and unfined, so well, they know. didn't they didn't do a, a whole lot of messing with it. They just kind of put it there Let and, the and grape barrel it. itself. Yeah, it's really cool. It's it's very complex. I'm getting just tons of different kind of different flavors. You know, the fruit jumps out at me, but I think it's it's also it's got a little bit of that earth tones 
a little, little earthiness to it, right? Like some tree bark. This is the kind of wine that a few years ago when all I liked was light harvest Riesling, and don't get me wrong, I still like light harvest Riesling. This is the kind of wine I would have hated. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. Love, love. This is... Love, uh, love, love. This is indeed a big, bold red yeah. um, from Michigan. This, I, I can just imagine sitting down with a wonderful uh, New York strip steak. I still don't like steak, but I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> what Fresh else should I go? Maybe, maybe it's a lamb. Yeah. Right, we're, getting, we're making the vegetarian pants right now. Maybe some lentils. A beautiful piece of um, grilled tofu. <laughs> Now you're just making fun of people. I am a veggie lover. I'm not really that into meat. So I would just drink this by itself. But I can see you drinking it with a big steak. Yeah, no, this is great. I'm really enjoying this. Um, I don't know where you can pick up the Lynn Alexander line other than at Cherry Creek. So I'd be curious if... We'll uh, find out for you. If Which we should have found out before. Yeah, the and because, because, I mean... It, it's so good. It's, it's well worth it. What operation is this? It's well worth Even if you have to go to the winery to pick it up, it's well worth a visit. Well, you should go to the winery. For sure. Go to the winery. What's wrong with you? Go to the winery. So check this out. I'm curious if anybody else, we have a couple of other uh, Lynn Alexander wines in the cellar that we'll be corking out over the next uh, couple of months to, to try. But uh, if there's anything like this one, this is fantastic. I, I think this, I get the impression from this wine that this would be also one that could lay down for a while. Yeah. 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 It, it, tons of tannins, mm -hmm. um, which is which is awesome. So you know, I almost, you know, want to go and it pick up feels, another bottle and lay it down for another five years. It feels years. like it has some good, a long finish. Yeah. Layers of flavors. I dig it. I dig it. And I think, you know, a lot of times you get, if you get the people around here who are like, I only drink California wine. I like Cabernet Sauvignon, and then they're like, "But there's no Cabernet Sauvignon in Michigan." Well, right. there you go. Here's there it is. Cabernet Sauvignon. So you can shut them up with this. This will shut up the critics, <laughs> or at least the uneducated. This is great. Check out uh, <laughs> Cherry Creek Cellars. Check out the Lynn Alexander wines, and please keep checking out MichiganByTheBottle.com, where we're supporting the state with every sip. You could buy these awesome t-shirts in our tasting room and online. In case you were distracted by the wonder of the podcast from my awesome t-shirt. Because we are indeed supporting the state with every sip. Look at you whoring yourself out. You're a whore. Why are you That's enough. Dear God.